Hey everyone, this is David. Welcome back to my studio and welcome back to another video. Now today I'm going to be talking to you about my everyday tech and camera carry in 2020. So I love watching these videos on YouTube and elsewhere. Uh, they give you a, a little peep into somebody else's life and how they're doing their work. So hopefully you're going to find this interesting. So I'm going to show you three cameras that I use almost daily and three other bits of tech that I really couldn't be without. So I'll start with the cameras first. Number one is my Fuji X-Pro1. Here it is. Now, this little camera I use in place of a phone camera. It's a really, really gorgeous piece of gear. So it first came out in 2012, so it's not uh, particularly recent. It doesn't have particularly modern features on it, but it does take incredible photos, and it's a real joy to use, actually. And one thing that it has in common with all the cameras that I'm going to show to you today is that it feels like using a film camera. And the colors on this thing are gorgeous, really, really beautiful. And that's one thing that Fujifilm cameras have become so well known for. And it's certainly true of this. I just use it like a point and shoot. It is a fully featured manual camera. If you want to do manual stuff with it, that's absolutely fine. I just use it to capture my everyday moments and I love it. It's small enough just to go in, uh, in a small bag or around my neck, but I carry it most places I go. It's got the 27 millimeter f2.8 lens on here and that's equivalent to about 35 millimeter full frame so it has the lovely film emulations that most of the fujifilm digital cameras have it's not as fully featured as more recent fujifilms uh, in terms of those film presets but i just use the default settings primarily or the default black and white and i get some really really lovely results with it so that's the fuji x pro one next up it's the Canon 5D Classic. So sometimes called the 5D Mark I. This is the OG 5D. Came out in 2005, very much not a contemporary camera, but it, it's got a kind of cult status online. And the, the things that I'm about to say about it are pretty much the same as what many other people are saying about this camera. So it's shackled up with a 50 millimeter lens at the moment, the Sigma Art 50 which is a really lovely modern lens actually and they go uh, they go great together but again it feels just like shooting a film camera it's very simple in uh, its operation you can use this thing fully manually really easily i tend to use it on aperture priority mode and have auto white balance and uh, iso 100 when i can and this thing shoots incredible pictures straight out of the camera i don't really have to do any other retouching generally i don't use it for work most of the time i do do some studio shoots with it but i use it as an everyday camera when I'm out and about. It is kind of a bit big and heavy, a sort of chunky DSLR, so it's not as convenient as the X-Pro1, but I still love it. It does have plenty of limitations. This is an old camera, so 2005, if I remember correctly. It doesn't do video, not that I'm too worried about that. It's not very good above probably a thousand ISO, but I, I always shoot it in good light. But the Canon colors that everybody talks about, this thing has it in spades. I think another thing that people often say about this camera is that Canon got the way it reproduces skin tones right with this camera. And I mean, I've shot most of Canon's DSLRs that came out since then, and I don't think that skin tone reproduction has been bettered. So I absolutely love this thing. I wouldn't want to be without it. And I shoot with it most days. It's really lovely. Listen to the sound the shutter makes. It's awesome, isn't it? It's totally nerdy, but I love the sound it makes. Okay, so let's move on to the next camera. So this is my work camera. Here it is, it's another Fuji film. This is the GFX 50S. So it's a medium format mirrorless camera. There it is. And it has the Fuji film GF 63 millimeter F 2.8. Now that's equivalent to about 50 millimeters on full frame DSLR. And I use this for my studio work. And this is a serious piece of kit. It's big and unwieldy and slow and essentially really impractical. But the images that it produces are stunning. Really, really beautiful. Very, very high resolution. Um, the sensor on this thing is 51 megapixels, so it produces enormous files. And again, the, the colors that come off this thing are really, really 
chef's kiss, really, really beautiful. So that's what I use for my work, my serious work. Now let's talk about three pieces of tech that I wouldn't be without. So first of all, my iPhone 8 Plus. Now it's got a battery case on it, as you might be able to see. So this thing is a thick boy. Now I use this to run my business uh, primarily. So I do my retouching and my editing on Mac computers, primarily a, a 27 inch iMac, but most of the other stuff that is going into my business, my social media, my accounting, my file transfer, all of that kind of stuff, I'm doing with my iPhone. And it's a very, very capable machine. I don't need to tell you about what an iPhone 8 Plus does. It's a few generations old now, but still absolutely brilliant for me. And I pair it with this. So this is a Logitech K380. It's a Bluetooth keyboard and I just link it up with the phone and I can use the phone just like a computer. So have another look at it and look at the three yellow buttons. So those allow you to link the keyboard up with three different pieces of gear, another computer, an iPad or whatever. And you don't have that annoying thing that some Bluetooth keyboards have where it's struggling to find them and you're having to pair them and it takes you five minutes to get the thing set up. With this, you just turn it on, you hit whichever yellow button connects to your phone or your iPad and you are away. So that's awesome. I wouldn't want to be without that. And finally, my headphones. These are Bose QC35 II. So they are noise cancelling headphones. They're great. I use them many hours every day and the, they have great noise cancelling qualities. So initially they were good for flights. That's what I bought them for to, to block out the airplane noise, but they are good for keeping out all kinds of noise. So if you need to focus, they are amazing. Uh, the sound quality of the music they play is also amazing. I love it. But one of the most useful things about the, the Bose headphones is that I use them all the time when I'm making calls. So they're incredibly practical. I can make work calls or other kinds of calls while I'm doing something else. I use them for all my Skype and my Zoom consultations. They're just brilliant. They do exactly the same job as Apple AirPods. I've had those in the past. Uh, in my opinion, they're a massive waste of money. The sound quality is is pretty poor for the uh, for the money you pay for them and then they die after about a year and a half and go into some landfill completely pointless so those are my three bits of uh, everyday carry technology everyday carry cameras i keep most of this stuff inside a 10 liter sling bag now i haven't got that with me but i'll stick up a picture so that you can see it it's super practical it's secure because it zips up from the back and it keeps most of my stuff safe and very easy to grab when i need it i don't carry all three cameras around all the time obviously i usually just have one with me but these three the 5d classic the fuji x pro one and the Fuji GFX 50S are the ones that I do most of my work with. I do have quite a large collection of cameras that I use for work, including some very worthy but very boring cameras such as the 5D Mark III, which does its job fine, but is a completely uninteresting and uninspiring camera to me. But those three are the ones that really get my creative juices going. I hope that's been interesting for you and thank you.